Christ. Now, a lot of people think that Goofy is the only voice that I do and have ever done. Not true. I started off as a stand-up comedian. Uh, back in Dallas, Texas, in 1982, I started doing a stand-up comedy, but I've always been one of those kids that did voices ever since I was a movie nut as a kid. And I was always one of those kids that loved cartoons. And I would watch the television on uh, Saturday morning and uh, turn the TV tuner back and forth between different channels. And it usually sounded like, Hey, Marky, what's he just pulling red right over my head? Yes, Inspector, that may be right to look now, too. Where's the little nail? Well, I'll see, dog. Pound and crunch cereal. Stay crunchy. Even the milk. Oh, brother. Ain't I a stick? And then we turned the set on. It was kind of a thing. Uh, <laughs> I was as cute as a button, almost as cute as I am right now. And people would look at me and say, as I danced and say, isn't she amazing for her age? People look at me today and say, isn't she amazing for her age? <laughs> So I really want to thank the two of them for, for coming out here and giving their time. Um, for those of you who may or may not know, depending on what articles you read or, or how you found out about this, um, we are donating a significant amount of proceeds from this event to the Dayton Children's Medical Center. Okay, are we ready? Come on up here. Here we go. Here we go. You got 30 seconds. I, I told her to guard everything. Okay. Okay, take it. Just take it off. Put yours on and go to the next one. Oh, that's actually. Look at that. Okay, go. That's the whole point. So I did stand-up comedy and impressions for a number of years. And people always say, well, how do you do impressions? How do you learn voices? And I'll teach actors today. I teach acting as well as uh, as doing voiceover work. And I always say, well, you know, you take take a if you want to do a voice of someone, like if you wanted to do one of the presidents, for example, they're always pretty easy to do because you have to grab a saying that they're famous for, take that, do it over and over until you can do it. If you go back to like John Kennedy, you know, what was one of his famous sayings? It was, ask not what your country. You ask what you can do for your country. Yeah, give a round of applause. How is that what they will say? I'm like the real Mickey and Minnie. met some of the other Goofies around the world. I had lunch, they called me over and said, they want to meet you and go to lunch. I had lunch with the Chinese and the Norwegian Goofy, <laughs> which was very strange. Uh, Nor Norwegian Goofy is very, it's like, oh, yo, you know. <laughs> I was at the uh, Alice Cooper Theater in there was a lady standing with a group that was around my table and she was just shaking. She would have to, like this. And I think she was about, oh, I guess 34, something like that, 36. And I thought, oh, oh, oh I better call security or something because, I mean, she was just sat, standing there. And finally she came up to the table and she took a hold of my hand and she shook it. She said, I never thought that I could meet the woman who saved my life. And I thought, I really got someone now. It was really weird. Yeah. But she said, here's what happened. She said, three years ago, I weighed 300 pounds plus. Both of my knees had to be redone. I was in a wheelchair. There were other things wrong with me. And I was just so depressed, I just didn't want to live. And so she said, what I thought, I can't keep thinking these thoughts. Who thinks happy thoughts? And she said, of course, Tinkerbell does. <laughs> so she went and had Tinkerbell tattooed on her inner leg, uh, 
about that big in color, beautifully done. So every time that she thought of a depressing thought, she would put her foot up and she'd say, no, it's only happy thoughts. Tink and me, we're going to make it through. 